Welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We're also live on Music 99. If you have any questions on today's subject, you can send them in to Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on Cape Economics Unit 1. I am Abigail James. Now, last week, your presenter spoke about effective demand of consumers and in particular also the law of demand. Now, just by way of recap, the law of demand states that if the price of a good increase, then quantity demanded for that good will decrease. And of course, the opposite holds true that if the price decrease, then quantity demanded for that good will increase. But we know as consumers that all goods and all scenarios will not obey the law of demand. Hence, our topic for today, price, looking at price elasticity of demand. Now, here I have an elastic band. I want you to keep this in mind. This elastic band, if you notice, is very stretchy and responsive. This elastic band, however, does not respond so greatly as the one before. Hence, it leads us to the concept of elasticity. So for today, we are going to cover the following objectives. We're going to explain price elasticity of demand. We're going to calculate numerical values of elasticity. We're going to interpret those numeric values of elasticity. And we want to look at some of the factors that will affect elasticity of demand. Now, in general, elasticity of demand measures the degree of responsiveness or sensitivity. Please note those two words, responsiveness or sensitivity of quantity demanded of a good or service to changes in determinants of demand. So in particular, the three measures of demand of elasticity are price elasticity, income elasticity, and cross or cross price elasticity. But today we are specifically going to look at price elasticity of demand. Can you remember the definition? Because for some of you, this is revision. Now price elasticity of demand measures the degree of responsiveness or sensitivity of quantity demanded of a product to changes in its price. And this is the formula. It is calculated as the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. Now, I know that there are some students, the minute you see figures and, quant and um, equations and all of those things, you start getting nervous like myself. I don't like figures. You ask me to count to 10 and I get nervous. But we're going to go through it together and you're going to see it's very simple to calculate. There's also another method of calculating price elasticity of demand. For this method, it's the change in quantity divided by the average of the quantity over, again, the change in price divided by the average of the two prices. This is a more complex method. However, in exams, unless they specifically ask you for this method, the more common method is used to calculate price elasticity of demand, which is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. Now, let us look at this question together and try and work at using the formula. It says, when the price of pencils increased from $20 to $22, the quantity of pencils demanded decreased 
from 100 to 87. What is the price elasticity of demand for pencils? Let's work this one together. The answer is there, but for those who need me to break it down, let us do it together. Always, I always say to my students, please put the formula so that you do not make the mistake and pick up the wrong figures. So our formula again, price elasticity of demand is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. Let's start with looking at the percentage change in quantity demanded. I have a little thing that I say to my students, once you're asked to calculate the percentage change in anything, always keep this in mind. It is new minus old over old. So for quantity demanded, the question said that the quantity of pencils decreased from 100 to 87. So the new quantity is, right, 87 minus the old quantity, which is 100, divided by old, again, old quantity, which is 100. And so I'm sure by this you are taking out your calculators and you are working along with me. So 87 minus 100 divided by 100, you're going to get a negative 0 0.13. So we are done with that part, looking at the percentage change in quantity demanded. Let's now work percentage change in price. Again, to our little note there, New minus old divided by old, new price, the question say it is $22 minus the old price of $20 divided by the old price of $20. And you're working with me, I'm giving you some time. And so your answer here is 0 0.1. Therefore, the price elasticity of demand for pencil is negative 0 0.13 divided by 0 0.1. And your answer is, that's correct, one, negative 1 1.3. Now, it is very important for you to know that in this example, the answer negative 1.3 is reflecting the change in quantity demanded for pencils as it relates to a change in the price. Now the negative sign here, and this is what we must know, that we are not going to use the negative sign when we are interpreting our coefficient of price elasticity of demand. From a mathematical point of view, if I ask you if this is greater or less than one, you, and you're looking at the negative sign, you're going to say to me, it is less than one. However, for economics, the price elasticity of demand, we ignore the negative sign because it's just there to, note, to denote that there is an inverse relationship. An inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, which is supported by the law of demand. So students, please do not use a negative sign to interpret your coefficient. It is just there to say to you or to remind you that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Now there are varying degrees of elasticity. And the first one is when a good is described as being elastic. It is elastic when the price elasticity of demand coefficient is greater than one, meaning that the percentage change in quantity demanded 
is larger than the percentage change in price. If you can see this diagram here, the price change here was just a simple $10 change. However, there was a great reaction in terms of quantity demanded for this good. At $50, quantity demanded was 100. But with a $10 increase to $60, quantity demanded fell to 50. This shows that consumers are highly sensitive or responsive to a change in the price of this good. And it usually happens when this, with, with goods that have what we call closed substitutes. So for example, if Anchor Butter increased their price to say $50 more, consumers will say, well, I don't have to buy Anchor Butter. There are other substitutes that I can use. I can go buy and chiffon or blue banner. Or I can't believe it's not butter, but they have choices. So they are highly responsive to a change in the price of the good. Please note that the demand curve here is sort of flat, right? Showing that the $10 change is causing a very significant change in quantity demanded. <clears throat> the second degree is termed inelastic. And this results when the price elasticity coefficient is less than one so when you do the calculations and it is less than one that good is determined to be inelastic meaning that the percentage change in quantity demanded is less than the percentage change in price so if you look at this diagram here now the demand curve for this good is a little bit steeper there was a $4 or 40% change here, increase in price. And the reaction in terms of quantity demanded was just a 10% decrease. So 40% increase in price, but just a 10% decrease in quantity demanded. Now, for this situation, it's usually for goods and services that consumers basically cannot do without. These tend to be um, what we call necessity goods. So for example, look at bread. I remember bread was 150, 180, gone to 200, 300, 310 for our bread. But we still buy bread because for us as parents, it's an easy breakfast solution. Now that we are at home and quarantined, oh my Lord, we have it for lunch, breakfast, snack, toast, all kind of things. Bread is just going and you still go out and buy bread, even though the price of bread have increased. All right. So this one for that good, we can say that bread is inelastic in terms of its demand. Let's go on and look at the other one. Unitary elastic. This is when now the price elasticity of demand is equal to one so what you'll find here is that the percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to the percentage change in price so it is the same so if there is a 10 percent increase in price you'll find a 10 percent decrease in quantity demanded Then we have now the extreme situations. Perfect elastic. This is when now the price elasticity of demand is equal to infinity. Now, this situation is very unique. And I'm going to link it to something that um, you would be exposed to during the school year. But let's just go through this first. A small increase in price, change, uh, a small pre increase in price, we'll see quantity demanded fall into zero. So if you notice here now that the demand curve for this good is horizontal, you can sell any amount of goods or services at that price. But if you try to increase it to just $1 or 50 cents over the price, your quantity demanded for that good is going to fall to zero. Now, sometimes students ask me, Miss, what kind of good will be like that? I give you this scenario. If we are at, uh, for example, at a game, stadium, and all the vendors there are selling bag juice, and we know 
that bag juice is for $20 or $25. And one vendor decide that she's going to sell her bag juice for $30 or $40. She will get no sales at all because everybody knows that bag juice is for $20. All right, so that's the kind of scenario I will give you. This, my students, I'm sure you're linking it with market structure with perfect competition where they have that same situation because as price takers, yes, you remember, it's coming back to you now, as price takers, there is perfect knowledge also, and so everybody know the price of the good. So perfectly elastic, it's infinity. Any increase in price will cause demand to fall to zero. And the last one in terms of the degrees, is perfect inelastic. And this now, when the price elasticity of demand is equal to zero, it means that when price changes, demand does not change at all. Now, if you look at the demand curve, it is a vertical. And even with the price changes, demand remains constant. That would be for us maybe like our demand for electricity. Even though the JPS is applying for a 10% increase, we're not gonna run out and say, oh no, take all the current out of the house. I will go back to buckle touch. No, our kerosene lamp, our tilling lamp, no. We're still going to use the same amount of electricity. We may try to conserve, put in all the things to sort of um, minimize our usage, but our demand for the good will not change even though there is an increase in the price of the good. Now, having an understanding of the degrees of elasticity can help persons who are going into business, young entrepreneurs, because knowing the nature of the good will help you to determine if it is wise for you to increase the price of your good or not, because that can have an impact on your total revenue. So just to sum it up quickly here, in terms of if you can see properly, it's elasticity, price change, and revenue response. So if your good is elastic, remember we say that when it is elastic, consumers are highly responsive to any change in price. So if your aim is to increase your revenue, then you have to decrease the price of your good in order to increase your revenue because consumers will say they want that good, they need that good. The substitutes around are relatively more expensive. And so if you want to increase your revenue, knowing the nature of your good, then it is wise for you to decrease your price in order to increase revenue. If your good is unitary, then any increase or decrease, you will have the constant revenue um, response. So there would be any, anything insignificant on your revenue. If your good is inelastic, meaning that consumers are not highly sensitive or responsive to a change in price, then it is best for you to increase your price in order to increase your revenue. It sounds unfair, but the fact of the matter is her businesses, they are profit organizations. They want to make a profit. Of course, once there are laws to regulate exploitation or, and so on, but if the good is a necessity good, consumers are going to buy it. And remember what the definition of demand is, that you are willing and able to purchase the good or service at that given price for that given time period. Now we want to turn our attention to some of the factors that will affect price elasticity of demand. And the first one here is the nature of the good. We touched on it, some of it before, but let us go through. Goods that are necessities, such as basic food stuff, normally have relatively inelastic demand curves. As I said to you before, these are items that we need for our day-to-day -day 
existence. So our water, our light, our food, all of these things um, will have an inelastic demand curve. They are not responsive or not very sensitive to changes in price. In contrast, luxury goods such as Rolex watches, they have rather an elastic demand curve. That's something that we don't need. It's not a necessity for life. It looks good. Um, probably, you know, put you several levels on the status quo. But I mean, it is not needed. And so if the price change, you find yourself a nice clean and cheap, down a town, and you're good to go. The second factor is the availability of clothes substitutes. It says here that if consumers e easily obtain an acceptable substitute for a product whose price increase, the demand is more elastic. And I said to you before that with the example of the butter, if you can't afford anchor butter, there are other substitutes. So the demand for anchor butter, you'll find that it is more elastic because they are close substitutes. Just so we'll bring this point that the demand for gasoline is inelastic because we can't run a car without it. But the demand for a particular brand of gasoline is elastic because other brands work just as well. And maybe you know, some, some car fanatics may not agree with me, but when you go to the gas station, whether it be Total, Rubies, or whichever one, um, 87 is 87 and 90 is 90, right? So the brand of gas is elastic, but gasoline itself, the demand for it is inelastic because it's a necessity item for us to run our motor cars. All right, now let us look at this third factor. It speaks of the, faction, the fraction of income ab absorbed. So you find that very inexpensive items tend to be inelastic in its demand. And that sounds weird, but look at it. Who is going to buy less salt if the price of salt go by 10%? I mean, as consumers, when we go and we really don't check the price of salt, we just pick up a pack of salt and we are good to go, right? Because salt is not that expensive in comparison to the other items on your grocery list or your, your budget. But some consumers, you may be forced to postpone buying a new car or you may buy a used car instead if auto prices go up by 10%. So you find here now that your purchasing, your, your, your need to purchase a car is inelastic because of the amount of income that it will take up in terms of you trying to get that car. Inter, you know, so you're looking at salt and you're looking at purchasing a car. Purchasing a car is elastic. So if you can't afford it, you find something else cheaper or you wait until you get that pay raise. Now, the last one we want to look at in terms of the factors that affect price elasticity of demand is the good, if the good is a habit forming or an addictive good. You'll find that these goods now, the price elasticity of demand is usually inelastic because these, this item now, it's one that the consumers know, they have no other choice but to pay whatever the producer is demanding because they are addicted. So for example, if the price of a pack of cigarettes go up, it will likely not have any effect on demand because consumers are addicted to um, smoking cigarettes. Some persons are addicted to chocolate, so they will not pass the chocolate in the aisle, they will purchase it regardless of the price. Now I want to go into some more questions so that you have the practice in calculating your price elasticity of demand. So let's just look at this question. It says here, suppose the price of paper rises 10% and the quantity demanded falls 15%. What is the price elasticity of demand for paper elastic? unit elastic or inelastic i've given you a few 
seconds to go ahead of me and try and work the answer. So the question says that price of paper rise by 10%, quantity demanded fall by 15. Here we have our formula. I know I sound like a scratch record, but please always put your formula down when you're calculating to ensure that you do not make any errors in flipping the information and getting the wrong answer. So they tell you that quantity demanded fall by 15%. And price went up by 10%. And therefore, your price elasticity of demand is that you are correct, 1.5. So the other part of the question says, is the price elasticity of demand for paper elastic, unit elastic, or inelastic? We have here 1.5. The PED is greater than 1. Therefore, the good is, you are correct, elastic. All right, let's try another one. This question says, suppose a rise in the price of syrup from $550 to $650 per gallon decreases the quantity demanded from 12,500 to 11,500 gallons. The day syrup go to that price, I start buying it totally. What is the PED for syrup and to interpret the PED for syrup? So let's go again. This time, we are not given the percentage change. We'll have to work it out to calculate the price elasticity of demand for syrup. Again, have your formula in place so that you do not make any errors. As an examiner, always pain my heart to see when students make a mistake and we cannot award them any marks. So let's go. Let's work now with the percentage change in quantity demanded. Remember again, we have new minus old divided by old. So our new quantity is 11,500 minus 12,500, which is the old quantity, divided by 12,500 old again. So you have here now that that is equal to negative 1,000 divided by 12,500. And you're working your calculators. I can hear them going, hear them going. And that is equal to negative 0 0.08, correct. Percentage change now in price. The new price is 650 minus 550 over the old price of 550. So that's 100 divided by 550 and you get 0 0.18. Therefore, the PED is equal to your quantity, which is zero, negative 0, negative 0.08, divided by your price 0 0.18, and your answer is 0 0.44. And the question also asks you to interpret it is less than one, so it is in elastic schools not out will be right back stay tuned
Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and Cape lessons here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and Cape Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and Cape Lessons, here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, Youth Protect and Information. yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and Cape Lessons live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and Cape Lessons here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and Cape Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and Cape Lessons, here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. <laughs> Welcome back to Schools Not Out. We were discussing Cape Economics Unit 1. Now, before the break, we did some more calculations on price elasticity of demand. I just have a few more questions for you. Now, let us look at this question. Which of the diagrams below indicate that the demand for the good is perfectly elastic? You have panel A. Demand curve is vertical. Panel B, it's horizontal. Panel C, it's constant. And panel D, it bows to the origin. And your answer is, yes, you got it right. It's panel B. And this is one of the questions that you'll see very popular in multiple choice, asking you to identify the demand curve for the good. Here is the last one. Multiple choice again. If demand is price elastic, then A, a rise in price will raise total revenue. B, a fall in price will raise total revenue. Or C, a fall in price will lower the quantity demanded. Or D, a rise in price won't have any effect on total revenue. Now, this is a tip for multiple choice students. Always eliminate the one that you know that is totally wrong. So, we know that D is out. We know that A is out because it says it's price elastic. So, the answer there is 
and you got it right. The answer there is B. Good, you did it. Now let us just recap. We looked at price elasticity of demand. And by way of definition, price elasticity of demand, it measures, you are correct, the responsiveness or the sensitivity of quantity demanded due to the change in price. And how is it calculated again? It is calculated, I know I sound like a scratch record, but please bear with me, it's calculated as the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. And I must say, students, and I cannot emphasize it enough, that you please, when you are doing your calculations, put the formula down so that you do not make the error of turning the information around and getting the answer incorrect. For multiple choice, we have to be careful now. It's only one correct answer, and there are many distractors. All right, we said in our lesson today that when the price elasticity of demand is greater than one, it means that it is elastic, meaning that consumers are highly responsive to a change in price because we'll see that the percentage change in quantity demanded is greater than right the percentage change in price when the price elasticity of demand is less than one we say that it is inelastic that the percentage change in price is less than the percentage change in quantity demanded so you'll find that for these type of goods they are necessity goods and they are not very responsive to a change in price let me just interject here. That is why the government is able to raise revenue when they add special taxation um, to alcohol, to cigarettes, to the telecommunication industry, because they know that if the price of the goods of those items, goods and services increase, there, there won't be much change in terms of quantity demanded for the good or service. When it is equal to one, it is referred to as unitary elastic. When it's equal to zero, it is perfectly inelastic and infinity perfectly elastic. Just want to encourage students in this time to keep calm and keep studying. I um, just want to make a special appeal that you are not to just say, okay, because I'm not doing a paper two, I don't have to study as hard. That's not true. You must know your content in order to manage your multiple choice questions. Remember for multiple choice that you only have one correct answer. With paper two, you probably can write until you get the answer right. But with multiple choice, there is only one answer. Also, at this time, you should be working on your school-based assessment. Now, um, I have been working with school that marking for 12, 13 years, and I just want to say that that is very important that you get the maximum amount of points that you can for your school-based assessment. The mark scheme is at the back of your syllabus. It's no secret what the examiners are looking for. One, ensure that your title is within the framework of the syllabus. Two, make sure that your aims and objectives, they are not the aims and objectives of the syllabus, but the aims and objective of your study. Your methodology must show that you have done some primary research and students, be careful when you say you're doing a research in Jamaica. Jamaica is 3 million persons. Your research must take in 10%. I'm sure you're not able to do a doctoral thesis at this time to interview 300,000 persons. So carry it smaller to your community, to your school, right? And then after that, you have your report. Now there's a section on your syllabus that speaks to your presentation of data. It is not a single chapter. 
it must be incorporated in your report. The marks are just there to say to you that your data must be clear. They must be linked with your studies, must be linked with your studies. And also they must, ha you must make reference to them in your, in your report. It makes no sense to have your charts there, your data there, and you don't make reference to them. After your report, you have your, that, that must also have in your knowledge, give credit to your source, your application, your evaluative statements. After that, you have your recommendation and conclusion. Again, they must be tied to your objectives. So your objectives cannot be 14 and 15 objectives. They must be short and concise. Anywhere between five or six is good enough. Then you make your link. Did you achieve your objectives? What did you find? Did it follow the rules or the policies or the, the economic concepts? If not, why not? And then you make your recommendations. Of course, you have your sources, your bibliography, and you, you know, use an appropriate format, APA format and so on. And your appendix must have a copy of your questionnaire. And if you conducted an interview, a list of your interview questions. Also, if you state in your methodology that you did an interview in your bibliography, you must see the name, the person's, the person's name that you did the interview with, their position, and the date that the interview was conducted. So students, in this time, I'm gonna ask you that you study hard, work hard, and remember, CXC only, don't give out only one distinction. It is there for all of us. So let's do ourselves proud. If you have, all right. So that's all for today for Cape Economics Unit 1. I hope you have grasped some points today that we discussed. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN today at 5 p.m. And in the school's not out highlights on Saturdays between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. It will also be on demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I am Abigail James. Up next, CSEC English A. Stay with us. TVJ present Schools Not Out, CSEC and Cape Lessons live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and Cape Lessons here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education